The Samsung 9100 Pro is a hell of an SSD. It made a noticeable difference to my computing experience, is the fastest drive I've tested, and will be my boot drive going forward. If you want the absolute fastest drive for a mini PC, laptop, or desktop, this drive will be of interest to you. But is it worth the asking price? That's a much more difficult question to answer. As we moved up from PCIe Gen 3 to Gen 4 drives, and now Gen 5, sequential read and write speeds have effectively doubled each generation. Which on paper sounds awesome, but there are a few usage cases where it's actually useful. The 4K random read and write is the most important for the majority of computing tasks and has seen a slight boost over the generations depending on the drive. For that metric, a high-end Gen 3 drive could give you a better experience than an OK Gen 4 as an example. While I use a Gen 4 drive for boot, I didn't notice much of a difference over Gen 3, but not so with the 9100 Pro. I saw it smash through Windows Update in the fastest time I've seen yet. And while that's nice and shows improvement on real world metrics, we're going to look at some hard numbers to see what kind of improvements we're looking at. Samsung's 9100 Pro starts at 1TB capacity and goes all the way up to 8TB for those with big wallets. The PCIe Gen 5.0 spec doubles the bandwidth of Gen 4, and Samsung is claiming up to 14.8GB a second sequential read and up to 13.4GB sequential write. The numbers I'm more interested in are the IOPS, and the 9100 Pro can apparently handle up to 2200K read and 2600K write. Another improvement Samsung claims over the previous generation is power efficiency, up by up to 49%, and the Gen 5 drive can read and write higher amounts of data per watt than the previous generation Samsung 990 Pro drive. Depending on the storage capacity of the drive itself, you'll see 1GB of SD RAM cache per terabyte to keep things nice and speedy. The maximum terabytes written warranty is also based on the capacity of the drive. This starts at 600 TBW for the 1TB drive and doubles as storage doubles. Since we're looking at the 4TB drive for this review, that's 2400 TBW for this one. All the Samsung 9100 Pros have the same 5 year warranty duration if TBW isn't reached. At the moment, there are very few mini PCs available that support PCIe Gen 5. Some off the top of my head include the latest ASUS NUX and MSI Cubies, but this interface will become more common in the future. Of course, the drive is also backward compatible with PCIe 3 and 4 slots. You just won't see the same ginormous sequential speeds, but if you're going to be spending this much dough on an SSD, you'll want the maximum speed to go with it. So, how much are we talking? Well, for this 4TB model, I found it online for 800 Aussie dollars or 450 US dollars, while the 1TB is 279 AUD or 170 US dollars. That's a hefty markup over Gen 4, and clearly for those that want and need the fastest SSD. So, what does it come with? Well, not too much. A manual, a drive, and this model comes with a surprisingly small heatsink for a Gen 5. And just be aware, the model with the heatsink is extra. So, only get it if you really need it. For something like the latest ASUS mini PCs, you're going to want a drive without a heatsink as the cooling there is already in place for any SSD you plonk into it. And so with that out of the way, let's hit some benchmarks. I usually don't use Crystal Disk Mark, but I will allow it for this review. I couldn't resist using the Guna version. This is the um, Shizuku edition. And I ran it multiple times to see if there were any discrepancies. Results will vary by drive and PC, but in my case, unlike Samsung's claims, the sequential read speed is slower than the write, which almost hits their stated maximum. Still, this is a good set of numbers. The 4K random read and write is also impressive, hitting Gen 4 spec when multi-threaded. And of course, the test with a Q depth of 1 and 1 thread is still no way near SATA speeds nor Intel Optane level, which unfortunately was a prohibitively expensive piece of tech and went the way of the Dodo. What this metric measures is basically the responsiveness of the drive. In real world terms, it's what we would consider a snappier system 
as it affects OS booting speed and even opening apps. Okay, so let's see how the 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 drive compares using the A AOE edition. The 9100 Pro is faster across the board, even in the all important Q1 T1 metric. Oh cool, I wasn't imagining things. I like to use 3 Mark storage benchmark to test all the drives found in the mini PCs I review. Unsurprisingly, the 9100 Pro is the fastest drive and you can see the points are dished out based on loading, recording, installing, saving and moving game files. Actual game data is used, so I think this is a nice benchmark. The result is substantially better than the 980 Pro I have lying around. That being said, other Gen 4 drives also perform well in this test. Finally, I tested the drive as it arrived with a heatsink on a motherboard and after thrashing it for 30 minutes non-stop, the maximum temperature reach didn't hit thermal throttling territory even though it is on the higher end. Mini PCs come with all sorts of different cooling solutions for the SSD, so this will greatly vary between devices as it will with motherboards and their armor heatsinks. One thing is for sure though, without a heatsink, it will thermal throttle. Alright then, time for the pros and cons. Samsung's 9100 Pro is the fastest drive I've tested and I actually noticed a difference using it. The 5 year warranty is nice and it didn't thermal throttle with the included heatsink. However, the price is high for the terabytes on offer. You're going to see thermal throttling without a heatsink, so make sure you're using some sort of cooling. Samsung is surprisingly late to the party with its Gen 5 drive, but it's a very good one that's let down by its high price. If time is money, but more money is required to bring that time down, then yeah, that's a calculation you'll need to make on your own to figure out if it's worth it for you. I can see the drive being popular amongst professionals, hardcore gamers, but the mainstream? Ugh, it's going to need a price drop. Anyway, affiliate links are in the video description if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and if you did want to know more about the ASUS NUC 15 Pro Plus mini PC I showed in this video, the review of it is right here. Cheers!